Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our ritual Mishtaburish here. Uh, we are holding a Mishtaburish Helik Beis, and we will be learning today. Meretz Hashem, we need to complete Dav Samach Hei Amid Beis, and we definitely need to get into Samach Vav Amid Aleph. We'll see how far we can get. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Pitzia Sapas. Before we begin, our learning today should be a Schus Rufu Shalema for Meir Ben Chayis Sara and Ariel Yosef Ben Miriam Rezel who are in need of Rachem and Shamayim. And of course, our learning should be a Schus for Achenu Kobes Yisrael, Hanesunim Batzara Bashivya, Haim Dim Bein Bayamu Bein Bayabasha, Makim Rachem Aleim, Ritzia Mitzara Levacha Mehafela Laura, Umi Shiba Lugula, Hashta Bagala, Uvizman Kariv, and Neymar Amen. So, we begin today on Samachhe Amid Beis um, in Simen Kuf Samach Zayin Sif Yud Ches. So that's three lines down in the Mechaber on Samachhe Amid Beis. Says the Mechaber Sif Yud Ches. Ha Beitzea, the Beitzea, the Godoil, the Balsuda, the one who's actually making the Bracha on the Chala or on the Lechem and cutting it up and giving it out. Ha Beitzea. He should place a piece of the lechem that he cuts before each individual. And the individual that he's giving the piece to should then pick it up in his hand. And here's a halacha that a lot of people are not aware of. The ein ha noisin biyad ha The beitzea should not hand the piece of lechem or challah directly into the hand of the recipient. So what did the Mechaber say over here? When you cut up the challah and you give out the pieces of the challah, take a piece of the challah, place it down in front of the recipient, or pass it to the recipient, but do not hand it straight to the recipient. Ella in Kain Haya Avel, unless... The beitzea happens to be an avel. If the beitzea is in avelus, then the beitzea could hand off the piece directly to somebody else. And the Rama puts in here in the in parentheses. Where does this come from? It comes from a pasuk in Echa. The pasuk in Echa says Parasotzion biyadeha. Now Parasotzion biyadeha literally means that. Klal Yisrael, Tzion, Eretz Yisrael, Yerushalayim, spread out its hands and called him, held up its hands in mourning. Perasot Tzion, Biyadeha, says the Ramah, Remez leprusas Hamaitzi. We learn from this Pasuk a Remez to the Prusa of Hamaitzi, to the piece of Chala that you give out by Hamaitzi, Shenoistin Biyadei Bishas Avelus. Perasot Tzion, um, when does Tzion stretch out with its hand and hand over with its hand? That's in Eicha during Avelus. Avelus. This is brought down by the Beis Yosef. This Limud from Peres Tzion Biyadeha, I believe, comes from the Abu Darham, which most people pronounce Avudraham, which I think is incorrect. I believe that the proper pronunciation is Abu Darham. And it's brought down from the Rambam. I actually did not look up this Rambam. I should have. I did not. Rambam Perik Zayin Mihilchis Brachis and Echuvis Harajba. Now, I have not been able to find the reasoning for this. Why it is that in Avelos, you hand off the Chala direct to the hand of the recipient, but when not in Avelos, you do not. I have not found a reason for it. We... The remez is from Peretzot Tzion Biyadeha, but what's the basis? Why is it this way? That I do not know. Val Masha Lo Yishama, Amar Lo Yishamati. Says the Chavetz Chaim, Ois Katen Peiches. Ha-Beitzea Noisein, the Beitzea places a piece of chala in front of the recipient. Says the Chavetz Chaim, this is another halacha that a lot of people are not aware of. Do not throw the piece of challah across the table so that it should land in front of the recipient. Even if we're talking about a scenario 
where the challah is in no way going to become ruined. It's not going to become nimas. It's not going to become ma'os, disgusting. It's not going to land in a puddle of water. It's not going to land in the dip. It's not going to land in somebody's soup. You're going to throw it, and it's going to land on a clean table or on the clean plate right in front of the recipient. You're still not allowed to do this. You don't throw the challah across the table. Where we're going to see a halacha, by bread, you do not throw bread. And furthermore, furthermore says the Chavetz Chaim, not only is it a piece of bread, and we don't throw bread, but it's also the Prusas HaMaitzi. This is the piece of bread that the Bracha was said upon. And have a Bezayan Mitzvah. That piece of challah has extra chashivas to it, because it's the Prusas HaMaitzi. It would be a Bezayan to the Bracha, a bazillion to the mitzvah, brichas hananin, to go ahead and throw it. Ice cut and pay tests. We don't hand off the challah directly to the recipient unless haya ovel, unless the baitzaya is an ovel. Ube Shabbos, even if the baitzaya is an ovel, on Shabbos, pyrus ovel kedarkoi. On Shabbos, even if the baitzaya is an ovel, he still should not hand it directly off to the recipient. He should do it in the normal way, which is to put it down in front of the recipient. Why? Because if the Baitseya is going to act in a way that we only act when we're in Avelus, so that's the very definition of Avelus Befarhesia. It's Shabbos, and he's publicly displaying Avelus by handing off the challah directly into the hand of the recipient. You're not allowed to publicly display Avelos on Shabbos. Therefore, an oval on Shabbos would be by tzeah in the normal way, put the piece of challah down on the table in front of the recipient. Ice cut and Sadik, we said this comes from a Pasik in Eicha, Peres in Biadeha, Remez Leprusa Samaitzi, Mashma, the implication over here is, says the Chavetz Chaim, what the Chavetz Chaim is saying is like this. Since the we learn out from the Pasuk in Eicha, that an oval hands off the challah directly to the hands of the recipient, that's why a non oval should not do it. Because if you're not in Avelus, and you act in a way which is supposed to be specific for Avelus, that could be Misra Mazle. That could cause your mazel to be damaged. It could be impugned. So you don't want to do something. This is like people say, Al Tiftach Pelusatan. Don't go sit down in a wheelchair if you don't need a wheelchair. Why? Deloy Lisra Mazle. You're sitting down in a wheelchair in Shemayim. There could be a kitra. Go. Oh, you're sitting in a wheelchair. Okay. You want to sit in a wheelchair? Maybe we'll make you need a wheelchair. You act in a way that is synonymous with Avelus. You hand off the challah directly to the recipient. That's synonymous with Avelus. It could cause Misra Mazle, and then it could be a kitra to cause you to be Chas Khalila in Avelus. Sif Yud Tes says the Machaber. Says to Bechaber, Mi she'enoi oichel. Now, this is something that I discussed at length in yesterday's shir, so I'm not going to go into it at length again today. We'll learn the halacha, we'll read it inside in the Chavetz Chaim, we'll see what the Mishnah says, but I already discussed this at length yesterday. Mi she'enoi oichel. Somebody who is not going to eat. Eino yochel levarech perches ha'maitzi lohitzi oichlem. He cannot be moitzi other people in the bracha of hamoitzi. The bracha of hamoitzi is a berchas hanenin, and therefore, if the person making the bracha, he himself is not going to eat, he cannot be moitzi other people in that berchas hanenin. So again, says the Bechaber, Misha eno oichel, somebody who is not going to eat, eno yochel levarech berchas hamoitzi lohitzi oichlem. He can't make the bracha of hamoitzi to be moitzi, the other people who are going to eat. Aval lekitanim, however, you could be moitzi a katan. You could recite a bracha on behalf of a minor child. Aval lekitanim yachal avarech, afal pishe enoi oichel imahem. 
On behalf of a katan, you could make a birchas hanenin, even though you're not going to eat. Why? In order to be able to train them properly in kiyam mitzvahs and to teach them how to properly make a birchas hanenin. Says the Chavetz Chaim on his katan tzaddik aleph. Eino yochel if you are not going to eat, you cannot be moitzi other people in the Berchas Hananin. Afilu eina shemei yachel avarech ba'atzmai. And this is true, even if you want to make the bracha on behalf of somebody who he himself does not know how to make a bracha. He's incapable of making a bracha. So like I said yesterday, you might have a very recent balchuva sitting across the table from you. He wants to eat. He doesn't know how to make a bracha. Don't say, you can't go ahead and say, listen, I'm not eating, but I'll make the bezoinus, I'll be mighty to you, have kavada to be yaitse, say amen and eat your piece of cake. Can't do that. If you're not going to eat, you can't be mighty him in a berches hanenin. Says the Mishtaburai's cut and sadik bays, berches hamaitzi. The Chavetz Chaim, the Mechaber over here, presents this halacha specific to the bracha of hamaitzi. Says the Chavetz Chaim, it is cut and sadik bays, berches hamaitzi, v'hu adin b'chol berches hanenin. This is not a halacha that is unique to the bracha of Hamitzi. This halacha applies to all berches hanenin. The dafka berches hamitzvah. It's only by berches hamitzvahs, like al nutilus lulav, like um, l'shmaya kol shofar, shekol yisrael arevim zebaze. When it comes to mitzvahs, where we have a concept of arvus, I'm a guarantor for you. We, we all have responsibility for every member of Klal Yisrael, and therefore, explains the Chavetz Chaim, when your fellow Yid is not able to be Yitz Mitzvah, if he is not being Yitz in the Mitzvah of Shofar, it's as if I'm not being Yitz. I'm an Arev for him. So if something is holding him up from being Yitz in the Mitzvah of Shofar, Somehow, it's almost as if I myself wasn't Yitz of the Mitzvah, even if I was already. Why? Because I am a guarantor. I'm an array for him. Misham Hachi, because of that, Yachal one Yid could be Mitzi another Yid in a Berchus HaMitzvah, I feel who Kvar Yatsi Yidah Mitzvah, even if he himself was already Yitz of the Mitzvah. So if I already took Dalad Minim, and I was already Yitz of the Mitzvah of Lulav and Dalad Minim, I could still make the brach of al Natilus Lulav to be mighty another Yid. Why? Because I carry a responsibility for his Kiyam HaMitzvahs. And that Arvus, that responsibility, allows me to go ahead and make the brach of al Natilus Lulav, even though, strictly speaking, I don't even need it. Because I was already Yitzhi the Mitzvah, and I'm not going to be Yitzhi the Mitzvah again now. Masha'enke Bebrecha Sanenin. But contrast that to Berchus Hanenin, like Hamaytzi B'zayne Shahakol Shaafa Pishein Chayva Al Hanene Levarich. Even though it's true that the person who wants to have a drink of water has a chiv to make a bracha of Shahakol, to also Leonis Mehaylam Azeb Loi Bracha, because it's forbidden for anyone to derive pleasure from Elam Azeb Loi Bracha. So if Shimon wants to take a drink of water, he certainly has a chiv. To make a brach of shahakal, mikamakim nevertheless biyadai shalai lehanes v'lai levarich. But Shimon is not mechuyiv to make a shahakal now because he's not mechuyiv to take a drink. All he has to do is refrain from drinking, and he has no chiv to make the brach of shahakal. Lefikach, therefore, oisai she'ena nene, the one who's not going to have ano, the one who's not drinking, ain't nikra mechuyiv b'brachazu. Again, if I'm here with Shimon and Shimon wants to take a drink of water, and I have no interest in taking a drink of water, and Shimon wants me to be might see him with a shahakal, I can't. Why? Because Arvus doesn't make me responsible for his brach of shahakal. Why? Because he doesn't have a mitzvah to make a shahakal now. He's only making a shahakal because he wants to take a drink. Don't take a drink. You have no chiv of shahakal now. So Mamela, I have no Arvus on your behalf, that would allow me to make a brach of shahakal without taking a drink. Therefore, I can't do it. And again, we spoke about this at length yesterday. So if you'd like, take a look at the previous year. And if you take a look at Dishu footnote number 63, he says over here what that's referring to. Sham Kasav, Shaaf Shimina Tari Yachal Adam Lahitzias Khaveroi, Beberkasamazin Afshalai Akal Klau. It happens to be 
that midaraisa, if you washed and ate a tuna fish sandwich, so now you need to bench, and I didn't eat at all, midaraisa, I could be might see you in Birka Samazan, even though I didn't eat. But we do not allow that. Okay. Ice cotton tzadik gimel. So the mechaber established that you cannot be might see somebody else in a bircha sanenin unless you yourself are going to have hana. So if you want to be might see somebody in the bircha samaitzi, you have to be eating bread. If you are not going to eat bread, you can't be might see him in a bircha sanenin. You can't be might see him in the brach of hamaitzi. The exception said the mechaber is for ketanim. If there's a, a young child, you have a five year old who wants to eat something and he doesn't know how to make a bezoinus, you could go over to him and you could say, listen, I'm going to make the bracha, listen to me, and say amen. And you could say the bracha with shame, umalchus, baruch atah Hashem, you could say Hashem's name, elenkeinu, you could say Hashem's name, melech ha'elam, bayre minei mezoinus, even though you're not going to eat a piece of cake, you're not going to eat anything. So by a gadol, you're not allowed to do that. But by a cotton, you are allowed to do it. Says the Chavetz Chaim, he's cut inside the gimel. This applies. I feel like Tanim Dalma, even Tanim, other Tanim, not your own children. Shein chinu chamuta lo love midina. Even a child that has nothing to do with you, you don't have a chiv of chinuch on this child. There's a kid in shul who comes over to you and says, "Excuse me, could you be might see me? I want to eat a cookie, and I don't know how to make them as I nice." But he knows how to ask you to be might see him in his eyes. Interesting scenario. But he can't make the bracha. He wants you to make the bracha for him. He's a stranger. You don't know this kid. You could be might see him in the bracha of his It's not because it's your child. Certainly, certainly if it's a member of your household, then of course you could do it because you have a chiv of chinuch. Says the but when it comes to Kedolim, when it comes to adults, I feel a little bit of When it comes to an adult, you're not allowed to be might see an adult in a Brichas Ananin if you didn't eat, even if he's a member of your household. So you have a certain level of greater responsibility for him. You're still not allowed to do it. Why? Again, because there's no Arvus on a Brichas Ananin. When it comes to a mitzvah, there's an Arvus. When it comes to a Birch Sanenin, there's no Arvus. Now, soon, we're going to see here in the Mechaber where we're going to get into like a gray area. Okay, now let's go to Sifchaf. The first thing that the Mechaber is going to wonder, not wonder, but the first Allah he's going to present, let's get straight what we just said. Ruvain wants to make a Shahakal and a drink of water. He doesn't know how to make a Shahakal. He asks Shimon to be mitzi him in the bracha shahakal, but Shimon's not going to drink. Shimon cannot be mitzi Ruvain in a bracha shahakal. Why not? Why not? Because you need two things. In order to have the ability to be mitzi somebody else in a bracha, there are at least two factors that you must have. One is shemea ka'ina. The one who's listening to the bracha has to listen with kavana, and shemea, his listening makes it ka'ina, as if he himself recited the bracha. Now that you can have. Reuven wants to drink a, take a drink of water. He asks Shimon to make the bracha. Reuven is fully prepared to listen to Reuven's bracha with kavana. So shemea ka'ina, theoretically, you can have. But now there's another factor that you need, and that is that Reuven has to be able to say the bracha without it being a bracha lavatala. Now, Reuven's not going to take a drink of water, so it's a bracha lavatala. How is Reuven allowed to make al uh, for Lulu for Shimon, that's because he has Arvus. And since he has Arvus, he has an Achrayis for Shimon, and therefore it's not a brachal of Atala. But by Brichas Anenin, it's a brachal of Atala. So now the Mechab is going to say, how about this case? How about when it comes to Su'uda Shabbos? Su'uda Shabbos is a mitzvah. So what happens if Reuven comes to Shimon and says, listen, I want to sit down. I want to have my Suda Shabbos. I don't know how to make a Maitzi. I have two beautiful fresh baked chalas over here. I have Lecha Mishnah, but I don't know how to make a Hamaitzi. Could you be Maitzi me in the Berkas Hamaitzi? You are not going to eat anything. 
But could you be mitzi me in the berachas hamitzi? Now you'll tell me, uh, it's a berachas anenin. Yeah, it's a berachas anenin, but it's a berachas anenin for my Shabbos suda, and I have a mitzvah to eat my Shabbos suda. So does that create a situation where Shimon can be mitzi ruve without he himself eating? Says the mechaber, no. Says the mechaber sifchaf, afilu b'shabbos, even on Shabbos, shul chayiv lechol pas, where everybody has a chiv to eat pas. Pashtas three times, three sudas, Friday night, the day suda on Shabbos and Shalish Seudais, colloquially known as Shaloshodesh. So even though there's a chiv to eat pas, Afilu B'Shabbos Yuchayv Lechel Pas, still says the Bechaber, Lo Yivarich Lo Yichavei Rebirchas HaMaitzi Im Enoi Oichel. You still can't be Maitzi somebody in the Brach of HaMaitzi unless you yourself are going to eat. Explains the Mishnah Rice Cut in Sadiq Dalit, this is a chiv on all three sudas to wash and have pas. And here's where the Mishnah explains why you can't do this. Because even though the three sudas on Shabbos are chiv, there is no specific mitzvah to eat pas. By the Suda on Shabbos. That's not the mitzvah. The mitzvah is not, you must eat pas by, uh, uh, by the Shabbos Suda. Ela kedei sheyehonem is Suda Shabbos. The chiv on Shabbos is the karos ala Shabbos oinig. We have bedivrei anavim, the karos ala Shabbos oinig. You have a chiv of oinig Shabbos. Now the geder that we've been given for oinig Shabbos is to have three seudas. But eating pas is not specifically the mitzvah. The mitzvah is the karas aloinik Shabbos, to have hana on Shabbos, to have oinik Shabbos. And therefore says the Chavetz Chaim, ve'en laha mitzvah atzma choiv. It's not a chiv of eating pas. Daha im nena mimasha misane. Let's say you have somebody who has more hana from fasting, what does that mean he has more enough from fasting? So I can tell you personally what it means to have more enough from fasting. You'll sit down Friday night and somebody will say, oh, you should eat a beautiful Suda Oynik Shabbos Friday night. So you should have gefilte fish and maybe salmon. Then you should have a nice bowl of chicken soup. Then bring out a nice rib roast with some nice potato kugel. Let me tell you something. If I'm going to eat chicken soup and rib roast and potato kugel on Friday night, I'm going to be up the whole night Friday night with reflux. So I'm gonna, it's going to be Gehenna for me. I'm not going to sleep Friday night. I'm going to be a wreck on Shabbos. So that's not Oinik. For me, it's not Oinik Shabbos to eat a nice, beautiful slice of prime rib and, and a nice chunk of potato kugel on Friday night. So for me, Oinik Shabbos is to abstain from that and to wash, have a small amount of challah and some salmon. And that's my Friday night suda. That's it. Not, not more. Because that's Oinik Shabbos. It's a nice piece of salmon. Dogim, boss of a dogim. Dogim is choshev. Salmon is choshev. So that's proper Oinik Shabbos, but not more than that. Now, the other guy is having maybe more Oinik Shabbos than me, but not really. Because for me to eat what he's eating would destroy my Oinik Shabbos. So that's what the Chavetz Chaim is saying over here. The chiv is not to eat pas. It's not a chiv to eat pas. It's a chiv of a karosal of Shabbos Oinik. It's a chiv of Oinik Shabbos. So Mimela, Reuven can't be Moitzi Shimon in the Bracha of HaMoitzi because the Bracha of HaMoitzi is a Berchus HaNenin Al HaPas. I don't have Arvus to help him make a Berchus HaNenin. Don't eat Pas. Now you'll tell me he has a Chiv to eat Pas? Not really. He has a Chiv of eating Shabbos, not a Chiv of eating Pas. Al-Kain continues the Chavetz Chaim here in Ois Cut and Sadiq Tal near the end. Al-Kain therefore, Heim Bechlal Sham Berchus HaNenin. So the Hamaitzi by the Shabbos Suda becomes no different than any other Berchas Hanenin. Now let's go back into the Mechaber here in Sif Chaf. The next phrase, the phraseology, is a little bit odd. So pay attention to how I read it. Says the Chavetz Chaim. We are, we are three lines up from the end of Simon Kuf Samach Zion, right next to it is the little ice cotton lamid for the Be'er Hagoyla, says the Mechaber, V'loi shari levarech la'acherim af al pi she'en o'itoyim. 
It's only mutter to make a birchas hanenin for somebody else, even though you're not going to eat yourself. Ella, the only time that that's mutter is birchas hamoitzi de matzah b'lel rishin shal pesach. You could be moitzi somebody with a birchas hamoitzi on matzah by the first seder, or birchas hayayin de kiddush, and by a boy priagofen of kiddush, bein shalayla, bein shalyoim, whether it's kiddush of the night or kiddush of the day. So you hear what we're saying over here? The first seder night, you already had your seder, you already ate matzah, you did your seba, you had your dal kaisis, you had your afi koiman, you had everything. You're not eating anymore. You're done. Now you stop by somebody's house. He's about to eat matzah, and he doesn't know how to make a bracha. Or for some reason, he can't make the bracha. He wants you to be mitzi him in the hamitzi. So the knee-jerk reaction is, I can't be mitzi you in the bracha hamitzi. Bracha hamitzi is a bracha hanenin. Not the first night of Pesach. The first night of Pesach, this yid has a chiv to eat a kezayis of matzah. And that is exactly the chiv. He has a chiv to eat pas. It's not like what the Mishnah just said on Shabbos. On Shabbos, you have no ikr chiv to eat pas. You just have a chiv of any Shabbos. But the first night, the first seder, first night Pesach, you have a nasei daraisa to eat a kezai of matzah. And you can't eat the kezai of matzah without making a hamoitzi. So you have a chiv to make hamoitzi. In that case, my arvus, now I have arvus. Because now I have a responsibility to help him be Mekayim's mitzvah to eat matzah. So now I could be moitzi him in the bracha of hamoitzi, even though I am not going to eat. That's what the Mechaber says over here. It's, it's not mutter to make a bracha sanenin for somebody else, even though you yourself are not going to eat. Ella only... Berches Hamaitzi, the matzah below reaches the Pesach, the bracha of Hamaitzi on the matzah the first night of Pesach, or Berches Hayai in the Kiddush, and the Brei Priya Gofen on Kiddush, Bein Shalayla, whether it's Kiddush by day, Bein Shalyaim, or Kiddush by night, Sayan Shabbos, Sayan Yom Tov. Because again, by Kiddush, you have a chiv to make Kiddush. In order to make Kiddush, you need to make a Brei Priya Gofen on the wine. So now you have an ikr chiv to make a bar priya goffin and drink wine. So that's not just a birchas hanenin. That's a birchas hanenin and a birchas hamitzvah. So then I could be might see you even if I myself am not going to drink. Says the Mishra is cut inside the cake. Alpha pisha ain't a time. In these cases, you could be might see somebody else in the bracha even though you yourself are not going to eat anything or drink anything. Says the Chavetz Chaim, "Vuadin kishakvar kiyam mitzvah sakilas matzor ukvar kiddush alayayin." Same halacha. It's Shabbos by day. You already made kiddush. You were yotzi kiddush already. Now somebody wants you to be might see him in the bari priyagafen. You could. Vatam b'chazeh. The rationale for all of this is the berachas kiddush vakilas kizayis matzah. The bari priyagafen by kiddush and the hamoitzi by yidik kizayis matzah. He may chayvas hamitzvus. That's a chiv of a mitzvah. That creates Arvus the Same thing would be true on the first and second nights of Sukkot. Where every year there's a Chiv to eat a Kazayas of Pas in the Sukkah. So the first night Sukkot, the second night Sukkot, I could be Moitzi you in the Berchus HaMoitzi to allow you to eat a Kezayis of Pas in the Sukkah, even if I already ate in Sukkah, and even if I'm not going to eat anything. Because the HaMoitzi in this case becomes akin to a Berchus HaMitzvah. Eyes cut in Sadiq Vav. The Machabra said this works both by Kiddush by day and by Kiddush by night. Says the Mishnah again. The Ikra Niskan Rak Limitzvah Veloy Bishvel Hano. When it comes to Kiddush, we said that by the Shabbos Suda, I can't be Moitzi you and Hamoitzi on the Pass for the Shabbos Suda because there is no Chiv to eat Pass. The Chiv is the Karas al Shabbos Oinik. Should you say the same thing by Kiddush? Maybe by Kiddush, there's no chiv to drink wine. It's only a din and oinik Shabbos. 
and therefore really you have no chiv to make a bari priyagafen? No. When it comes to kiddish, it's a mitzvah to make kiddish. And that's why on Chavez, you don't like wine? Too bad. You don't like wine? You don't like grape juice? You don't like schnapps? Too bad. You got to make kiddish. So you have no way out. You got to make kiddish. So kiddish is a mitzvah. It's not just hanah. Valkain, bracha zuhi baklal shah brachas hamitzvahs. So now the bari priyag gafet becomes akin to the brachas hamitzvahs. The kaimalon, afa pishayot samaytzi, even though I was already yaitzi the mitzvah for myself, or even though I'm not going to drink, I can still be maitzi you. Okay, let's do the Rama over here and close out this simon. Says the Rama hago. V'yesh lecha el aprusa shebatsa aleha when you do betzias pas and you make hamoitzi, so you're let's say it's Shabbos, you're holding lechem mishnah, so you have two beautiful um, haimisha plain chalas, beautiful chalas, very nice chalas. You make hamoitzi on the two chalas. and now if you make the hamoitzi, you see that there's a raisin chala here on the plate too. Ooh, I like raisin chala. So now I want to eat a piece of raisin challah instead of making, instead of eating from the the challahs that I was baitzei on, that I made the brach on. Said the Ramah, no go. V'yesh lecha la prusa shabotza aleha. You have to eat the prusa that you used for the bracha. Kaidem sheyoyich al pas acher. Before you eat any other pas. Why? Shetehei ne'echeles l'teyavayin. Because we want that the the piece that you made the bracha on should be eaten with appetit. This is because of chavivus for the mitzvah. You made a bracha, you made the bracha on, on this challah. It got chashivus. It's, it's, it's kind of like a chayfet mitzvah. And we want you to eat that with a good appetite. We don't want you to put it down and eat something else. Now we could get involved over here in bracha shilas. I don't want to get involved in the bracha shilas. Somebody will say, well, I mean, if the raisin challah was in the kitchen, certainly you can't. The hamoitzi, uh, you know, you, you weren't having that in mind when you made the hamoitzi. Yeah, you knew it might, maybe you knew it was going to come to you. I don't want to get into the bracha shilas. We're going to have enough dealing with bracha shilas in the days to come. I'm just, the halacha over here is, let's imagine, for example, that on the challah board, under the challah cover, you had the raisin challah and the everything challah and the plain challah. But what you did was you picked up two plain challahs, you made a moitzi, you cut off a piece, it's ready to be eaten, and then you look and say, yeah, maybe I want raisin challah. Says the Ramon, you can't do that. Can't do that. Because the, these two plain challahs are the ones that you selected for the Betsiya Sapas. Those are the ones that you were holding by the Betsiya Sapas. Those are the ones that you imbued with the Hashivas of the Bracha, the Hashivas of the Mitzvah, and therefore you need to eat that first so it should be eaten. L'teyavoyim. Says the Mishnah Brura is cut in Sadiq Zion, Kaidim. Kas of Shla, the Shla writes, very interesting halacha over here. We know that by the Pesach Seder, you have a halacha of Afi Koimen. And we have a halacha of Ein Maftirin Akara Pesach Afi Koimen. We don't need anything after the Afi Koimen. One of the reasons brought down is because we want to have the time of the mitzvah. The Afi Koimen is from the Iker Mitzvah of Matzah. We want to have the tam of the Matzah Shal Mitzvah remaining in our mouth. That's brought down one of the reasons why we tell the Chacham, Ein Maftir and Akara Pesach Afi Koimen, is because this is one of the only mitzvahs that have anything to do with Tam. And we want to tell the Chacham that a mitzvah that have Tam. A mitzvah has to, have, it has to be a Batamta mitzvah. A mitzvah has to have taste, not a dry mitzvah. A mitzvah is supposed to have Tam. You're supposed to imbue mitzvahs with Tam. So that's why Ein Maftir and Akara Pesach Afi Koimen is what we tell the Chacham. Over here says the Shla, Kos of Shla, when you cut the prusa for the amaytzi, don't eat the whole thing right away at the beginning of the suda. Why? What are you saving it for? That should be the dessert. The dessert, the last thing that you eat from the suda, should be the rest, the shirayim, from the prusas hamaytzi. So that 
the the prusas hamaitzi, the prusas hamitzvah, the tam of that should remain in your mouth at the end of the meal. Interesting. It's a shla. Continues the Chavetz Chaim. Ein lahaakel lebehem of oif or lekuti miprusas hamaitzi. You don't take for the prusas hamaitzi and use it to feed it, feed it to an animal or feed it to the birds or feed it feed it to an eino yehudi. Oime chaticha shenei gaspa chaticha hamaitzi. So too, you don't use for those purposes the piece of challah that was next to the prusas hamaitzi. Explains the Chavetz Chaim. Hainu demeyoyse prusas shachatach mikaydem ayalakam ashalim. What you did was you cut off a piece from the shalim. Then chaytek achakach benoyse prusas chaticha tanal hamaitzi. So you had a challah. You made hamaitzi lechem and arts. You cut it in half. Now you took the half. That's the prusas kind of the prusas hamaitzi. You cut off a piece. You ate it. Now, says the Chavetz Chaim, even the rest of that piece, you shouldn't use it for any of these not nice purposes. Even the rest of that initial piece that you cut off, don't give it to an animal or to the birds or to an any Yehudi. Because that would not be proper covered for the mitzvah, the bracha of Hamitzi. And that ends Simon Kuf Samach Zion. Let's move on to Simon Kuf Samach I'm not going to be able to do that much more, but let's at least get on to Samach Vav. Simon Kuf Samach Ches. Al ezimine pas mevarchen. On what type of bread should you make the berkas hamotzi? Uba yud zayin si'ifim in area of 17 si'ifim. And what we're going to be concentrating on over here is, what do you mean, what kind of bread should we make the hamaitzi on? What you mean is, when you have choices in front of you, you can make the bracha on this type of bread, on that type of bread, on that type of bread. What are the kadimas? What gets preference when it comes to making the bracha? Says the mechaber sifalaf. Hoyu lefanav chatichais shall pass. Let's say you have a sliced rye bread or a sliced challah in the middle of the table. So you have a sliced up loaf. Ooh, pashalim. But then you also have a nice bilkala, which is a shalim. It's complete. And hakomi min echad. And they're both one type. So you have nice white, you know, white flour as opposed to whole wheat. You have a nice white bilkala. And you have a, a nice loaf or a few slices of nice white bread. So it's the same min. They're both wheat flour, and they're both even white flour. But you have slices, and you have a shalim. Says the Mechaber, Mivarech al hashalim. So the first thing you see is that there is a Kedima, when it comes to the bracha, there's a preference to make the bracha on a shalim, on a whole loaf, before you make it on a prusa, before you make it on a piece. So you have sliced bread, or you have a bilkala, you make the bracha on the bilkala, not on the sliced bread. Continues the Mechaber, Afilu hu pas kibur, pirush lechem shein enoki. This is true even, let's say the bilkala is a whole wheat bilkala, and the sliced is white chala. Now in halacha, there's a preference to white chala over whole wheat chala. White is considered pas noki, literally clean. Why is it clean? Well, more of the junk, the psoilus, is filtered out. The chaff, the bran, that's really all called psoilus. Nowadays, people want it. They pay to have it added back. By the way, adding it back creates all sorts of other channels that we'll have to get to. But but nowadays, everybody wants whole grain, whole wheat. In halacha, pas noki, white bread, is more kosher than whole wheat bread. So the Bechabi said so far like this. Told us two things. One is there's a kedima of a shalem over a prusa. There's a kedima of a whole piece over a sliced piece. That kedima even applies if the whole piece is paskiber. Even if the whole piece is whole grain, it's a whole wheat bilkala, and the sliced is white. So even though there is a preference white over whole wheat, not if the whole wheat is a shalem. And the white is a prusa. The mila of shalem overrides the mila of pasnaki. So again, let's see that inside. How you of katiche shall pass? You have slices of bread. 
Upas Sholem. You also have a Sholem, a Bilkala. And I call me Minechot. They're both one type of bread, meaning they're both wheat bread. Mevarech ala Sholem. You make the bracha on the Sholem. Afilu Upas Kibor. Even if it's inferior quality, because it's whole wheat, Pirish Lekmash Edenaki, Vikoton. And maybe the Bilkala is smaller than the slice. Maybe the slice is a really big slice. And the bilkel is actually smaller than the slice. So in this case, the slice has a milo that is bigger. The slice has a milo that is past noki. But still, the milo of sholem overrides all of those milos. So you have the sholem that's past kiber and it's small. But that overrides the white bread that's big. Why? Because that's a slice. And sholem comes first. Says the Mishra is cut Aleph Bavarak Allah Shalem, Mishra Hidder Mitzvah. This is all because of Hidder Mitzvah. Again, this is what you're making the bracha on. So you're imbuing it with an extra chilus. This is the piece that you're making the bracha zanenin on. That's mitzvah. So now you need Hidder Mitzvah. Let's say all you had in front of you was a slice. When you came to your seat after you washed, you didn't have a bilkal. All you had was a slice of challah. If all you have is a slice, you're going to make a mice and a slice. But let's say you went, you sat down, you went to make the bracha on the slice, so you picked up the slice, remember? You're supposed to hold it with all ten fingers. You picked up your slice with ten fingers, and you're about to make the bracha. If all you had in front of you was a slice, and you picked it up in order to make the bracha on it, and before you could recite the bracha, now suddenly they brought you a bilkala. What you should do is, you should combine the slice with the bilkala. Pick up the bilkala, combine it with the slice, and make the bracha on both. You can't put down the prusa. You can't put down the prusa because once you picked up the prusa could day to make the bracha, it would be a bazillion. You can't put it down. But now you have access to a shalim. And it's hidden mitzvah to make the bracha on the shalim. So pick up the shalim, hold it together with the prusa, and make the bracha on both. Vim kfar birech al prusa. But if you already made the hamaitzi on the prusa, yivtza oisa. Then you have to be baitzea from the prusa. Fafalun. Ice cotton base, pas kiber of a cotton. We said that the shalim, the mile of shlemus, overrides even though the bilkala, the shalim, is pas kiber, it's whole wheat, it's inferior quality, and it's also smaller than the slice. The mile of shalim, out of tve, I feel about it there, because the Chavitz Chaim says the mile of shlemus overrides. Okay? I thought we were going to. I, I'm so bad at this. I, I thought we were going to do at least half of Sam of Love and Aleph. Not to be. Okay, listen, Lamaisa. We did a nice piece and we spent 45 minutes learning Tyra. Nothing to complain about. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for Limit Our Tyra. Discuss of Limit Our Tyra. Should be making a God's Kla Yisrael. For Baron Shem should send Yeshua's and Force, Panati should do him to all those in need. We should be Zaychet to see the BS Goyal Tzedek, the Gu'ula Shlema, the Meherevi Amenu. Achenu kabeis Yisrael hanasudim batzaru ubashivya haimdim bein bayam ubein bayabasha hamakayim yirachem alehem v'yitziem mitzara l'ervacha me'afela la'ira u'mishibud l'guula hashda ba'agala u'vizman kariv v'neimar amen. Be well.